Today on Between the Lines, a testament to the healing power within us all with my guest, the acclaimed dancer, Carlton Wilborn. I'm Barry Kibrick, Carlton captivated audiences while on tour with Madonna and in her Truth or Dare and Vogue music videos. But with his book front and center, he takes us on a journey of a different step, one filled with internal strife, anger, and finally redemption, leaving in its wake lessons that will help all wounded souls. I'm a writer today because I was a reader when I was 11 years old, and it was... You do, need, need, you do not need to prove your state of happiness to anybody. Most of these speeches were as much as a month in preparation. The characters, the heroes in this book, are seekers of truth in, in a story that, that involves a lot of corruption. You don't get a chance to really talk about what's real, and that is the first thing to do. Carlton, welcome to the show. I was joking a little bit beforehand, and uh, I said as the crew walked in, they all saw the book front and center, and they said, isn't that the guy on Madonna's videos? And I said, <laughs> yes, but there's a lot more to it, and that's what we're going to find out today. So thank yes. you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my very, pleasure. Thank you very much. Well, listen, I want to begin with the way you begin the book, with a poem. Mm. And the poem is, we're not going to read the whole thing, but it's called The Kite. And it says, blowing in the wind designed to fly high, held by a cord of strength. This is the kite. Mm -hmm. Yet the book is dedicated to all the broken kites. Correct. One of them in particular, your brother, who yes. you make that uh, uh, poem to and dedicate it to. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, all of us, we Absolutely. all have a brokenness within us. Absolutely. And, and it speaks to the, the part of us that is broken that I write about is to that side of us that has given up our own voice. Um, I believe uh, there's a third stanza in there where I speak about um, him giving opinions over to people who've never even cleaned their own fortress and about the beauty that is inside him and I think that that really is something that all of us come up against you know whatever camp of community we have we tend to somehow our culture has been bred to find more value in that in them than what we were all individually designed to represent so well you know you you that's got to be your your key theme because there's an I just looked at as you were talking I yeah. saw the, the other poem I was going to bring it up in later called free but you mentioned that same thing you say when did what I thought become so insignificant to me to me absolutely absolutely and and I've realized and it wasn't a real targeted theme that I chose to be the lace but as I've gotten into speaking more and you know, just having some distance from the writing aspect of the book, I have realized that that really is what my work at this point is about inside of the entertainment thing is getting people charged to embrace who they are authentically, authentically embrace who they are. Because many of us feel and, you know, are clear that we're expressing ourselves in this form, but what I realize from my own work is that we're comfortable to fully express ourselves in the areas that we're comfortable, which is not necessarily the full range of who we are. Well, you know, it seems like almost all the struggles, in fact, that you're dealing with sure. is, is aimed at that. So that yeah. this is really becoming the theme as, as we're even going, yeah, because yeah. I can see, in fact, you, you talk about responsibility as well. and your own guilt and anguish over the fact oftentimes that you didn't feel you were walking the walk of responsibility, Absolutely. another poem yeah. in your book. Well, the walk of responsibility, it's interesting. When I was designing the book initially, it was broken up into themes being responsibility, gratitude, honor, faith, blocked out like that. And that structure didn't work, but I realized that there were pieces of, uh, pieces of that that I still wanted to represent the book as it currently is. And responsibility to me, I, I, it's the biggest gift that we can give to someone. It's the biggest gift that we can give to ourselves, just in regards to creating an energetic of peace that I get to go to sleep with, that I get to wake up and look in a mirror to. I know that I have walked with integrity. It's integrity at the end of the day. You also, though, uh, again, r r that runs in accord with that particular theme mm. is, I guess, the self-responsibility as well, because, you know, I wrote this down in my notes when mm -hmm. I was reading this. 
uh, and it's in the book, so I don't mind sharing it with the audience. Your, your dad was an alcoholic who yes. beat your mom. Your mom was cheating on your dad. Your dad actually had another family that he was supporting at the same time. Yes. Add insult to injury, you are molested repeatedly yeah. by a, a family friend who's actually your karate instructor or yeah. some form of in, uh, martial arts instructor. karate yes, exactly. instructor. And in the very beginning, though, you seem to still, rather than blame all of that, you take this responsibility. You even say the words are, it was me who got me into this position. And I almost wanted to yell and say, no, it yeah. wasn't Carlton. Yeah. They got you into that position. Sure. But you took that responsibility and accountability even from the very beginning. Well, I mean, the, I think that, um, I believe that it is, a, it is a duty for all of us. It is so easy to lay the weight of how our life is not functioning properly, again, on everybody else. This company didn't treat me right. This person said this, they cut in front of me, whatever. At the end of the day, there's a, there's a certain way as grown adult people that we should, I mean, if we just look at today, today there is a multitude of access for people to get to to find clarity on who they are, to find healing opportunities and, and tools to guide them through life. So there is no, there's no um, hook that somebody can go to that allows them to perpetuate the voice that somebody else is not taking care of me. It's nobody else's job. It's easy, and I could very easily justify laying the hammer on somebody else, but at the end of the day, People are who they are. All of us make choices that don't necessarily fit somebody else's journey. And at the end of the day, I do believe that it is our life. And how could I expect you to treat, or anyone else to treat me any more um, decently than I do myself well, that, and the circumstances that show up? That is the metaphor. In fact, front and center, you say, mm. that's what that means to, to not live in that guilt infested mm -hmm. stage to stand up front and center, announce to the who world I who I am. Yeah, there's an, I, I um, think I, just, I got to see, uh, there's an amazing movie out, uh, Notes on a Scandal, with Kate Blanchett and, and Judy Dench. And there's a moment in it where uh, the sort of sabotage that Kate Blanchett's character has been about, where she chooses to release that and she goes screaming up these stairs and the press and everything is out, outside, and she's just going, here I am, here I am, and there's this power, and I so, I was riveted to it, because I could so relate to that. She just wanted to be able to, she wanted, we all want inside of the chaos that we create, we want to be free. Can nobody do that for us, the way that we can do it? It's not easy, it's not comfortable, but I believe that that's the work. You know, you, so that the viewers know that the struggle that takes place to get to that point, mm -hmm. there's a period in your life, and I couldn't help but circle and star this. It's called the well period. Mm -hmm. And it is such a common term, especially for people feeling a deep depression that they are in this well, mm -hmm. that they can't get out. And you though saw light while in this well, and, and but not obviously in the very beginning, otherwise you wouldn't have been in That's the well. Right. So that is, to see that light when you're down there, shed some of that insight because I just know how many people even use that analogy of how sure. they feel. You know, Barry, I think um, I've said this and I'm, I'm grateful to um, have the perspective of thought that I do at this point. Um, I believe, you know, I'm, I've been involved in lots of different kinds of study and self-development and workshops and classes and all of things like that, that really supported this book showing up the way that it shows up right now. And in saying that, I know that there is a sliver, not a sliver, there's a huge amount of, of strength and power inside of all of us. And the, what I had to do inside of that well period was find the little kernel of it, because sometimes it feels real far away and you're smothered from it. But I knew somewhere, if I heard that it existed, 
or if I knew that there was an example of somebody else that showed that it was there and they, and they grabbed hold of it and went for the ride, all I need is one example and to know what is possible for myself. And that is what I really chose to.